Hey guys, it's Matt. Welcome to Speed Tutor, and today I'm going to supercharge your Unity Editor, and I give you a bunch of assets that I think should be in the Unity Editor by default because it's going to speed up your workflows and make your life so much easier. And you're going to thank me at the end of this video. And be sure to comment down below if you found any features in Unity or you've got any assets which help with this too. The first one we're going to look at is something called Hierarchy Designer. And when you import this for the first time, you can see in the top right, you could see the icons for the main items. You could see whether it's tagged and what type of object it is. And you can open out and you get icons for each of the different items. And you can see what components make up this asset at a glance. Now, you might say this is a bit messy and a bit ugly. But if you go to the top, which is Hierarchy Designer, and you go to the General Settings, you can unhide and hide the component naming. You can hide and unhide the show the main icons. So you don't need to have that. You can show the transform component folder component icons, game objects, and other things. You can set the styling for the hierarchy tags. So you can see if we set this to a red and press red, you can see that that's changed. So we know exactly what they're tagged by default. And you can even change the layer and any shortcuts, and you can save those out. Now, if we go to the hierarchy tools, and if you go to the hierarchy separator, you can go to the hierarchy separator manager, and you can see we can add a brand new separator. Instead of using game objects to do this, this could be our have that as 3d assets i want the text color white and the black ground back and i'm going to add the separator i'm going to make sure i save that then go back to the separator and click create all separators now you can see that 3d assets has been created so i can split up my assets in between what i might use and then even with folders i can just create a new default folder or i can create them in a similar way so instead of using empty game objects as like makeshift folders you can use this and you can collapse those down rename your folders and do anything you want and you can also see that it has full documentation to help you to be able to control how you want to use this and look at how to create different folders edit colors add separators and loads of different tools while you're checking out all these great extensions be sure to check out all the links below for the unity spring sale now on my adventure puzzle kit is 50 percent off and you can also join me on patreon to support me and the channel and get over 225 different scripts assets and projects and there's a big list down in the description and one of my personal favorites is the scene manager utility so when that's installed if you go to windows buyer games scenes and scene manager utility this is another nice pop out where we can see exactly what scenes we have currently in this project so i can quickly select one and just choose to press open i can choose to save my current scene if i want to and then it will open up my brand new scene and you can right click on them you can play open delete and you can also create a new scene from here saved multiple scenes save all open scenes open additive and even check the settings for your build settings in terms of exactly what the default state should be when you create your own scenes. Next one we're going to look at is something called hue folders, which can make your assets folders a different color if you'd like to be more color orientated in your project panel. So if you want to edit these, you can go to edit preferences, then you can go to hue folders and you can see we've got the hue folders default tint. So we can keep everything a default tint if we want a specific yellow. I quite like that. Then if we add something to the folders list, I want to say my scenes, I want that to be one which maybe I access all the time. So I want that to be a red color. So I know that it is now a red and everything within that is red. And we could specify subfolders if we want those to be different colors too. You could set the gradient scale. So if you want them to go all the way across or be more of an artistic effect, you can do that. Next one we're going to look at is something called a Neato Tags, which allows you to tag game objects with whatever tags that you want to use. So I'm going to give you an example and I'll go create and I'll just choose Neato tag and I'm just going to call this a new tag. So this new tag is going to be, let's just say player as this example. And if you need to edit those ones that have been created as a scriptable object, you can go to window, you can go to Neato tag manager and you can see it here. Then we can set the color of how we want that to be displayed. Now we could go on to any game object and just add the component of tagger. And you can actually script this with the API and say we select off this object and go back on our tagged object. We can see that this is tagged as player and whatever other tags we want, we can create new ones if we so wish. And a really useful one is actually called auto save scene. So if you install that and you, you go to tools, auto save free, 
then you can enable or disable or go to the settings. You can see the settings in the inspector and you can say auto save in the background, save every five minutes. The maximum file version is 10. You can change the folder depending on where you want this to save. So you don't overwrite things and make sure that you can never go back because you don't want it to overwrite your default creation that you've made before. You can set whether you want a simple counter or special names, and then you can create a log, which creates a timer so that they can actually see when the last time you did actually save. And do be sure to wishlist my game Left Alone Rebirth on Steam because it'd really help me out. Then we're going to look at one called Selection History which is actually quite useful when you click on a lot of objects or know which ones you've recently clicked on. So if you go to Window, you navigate to General, then you navigate to Selection History. We get a nice pop out here which is going to be my Selection History window. So when I select on these objects, you could see that it's showcasing all these different items that I've recently clicked on. And I did also feature another one called the Unity History window, which allows you to also favorite different things too. And you can find that on my channel and I'll link in the description to that as well. And one of my other favorite tools is the Selection Identity tool, which can be accessed in Window. Selection Identity, and you can set whether you want this on or off. And now when we highlight over objects in our scene view, we can actually see what they're called. So we know what we're actually clicking on, or we can turn this off if you don't want it. And you can actually change the text color if you want this to appear differently. Because half the time, I don't know what I'm trying to select if there's a few objects close to each other. Now, sometimes you want to adjust the pivot point of any particular asset that you've got. So let me say we've got this selected here and you see that the pivot point is at the center, very much at the bottom of this asset, a good place to put your pivot point. So say if we want to move the pivot point of this asset, which is normally static, unless we added a parent game object to this and then parented this object to that, and then it would inherit the pivot point. Now what you can do is you can right click, create an empty child of this. So this is just going to be the new pivot point. And now you can say we want to move the pivot point to the end of here. Then if we choose, we go to a window, adjust pivot. Then with the new pivot selected or that child object, you can say move unity material balls pivot here. So you can press that button. Then there is a utility to do this if the object doesn't have a mesh filter or mesh renderer. We can remove that child pivot by deleting it. And you can see if we click back on the Unity Material Ball, you can see that the pivot point has actually changed. And if you do Control Z, you can actually take your pivot back to where it was previously. So you don't need lots of child and parent objects. You can do this directly inside Unity. I've got now a fun little helpful utility and it's called Sticky Notes. And you can put sticky notes around your game exactly where you might have issues. So on my sticky note here, you can see that you can set the author, the title, the description, and you can click whether you need to go to the note or whether you need to set a target, which this needs to be, you can set tags. And if you do need to create a note, you can just go to window, dev tools, sticky notes, and you can either create a new note, an advanced note, or you can go to the manager. So you can see exactly what all your notes that you might have created. So I can just dock this wherever I want. So I might be working on this part of my scene and know that I needed to fix that and I could navigate to the note there and I know I remember what I'd written. Now I've got one which goes hand in hand with this sticky notes and this one could be used by itself or another and it's called the modular to do lists and you can create different topics and things that you need to fix and you can create your own topics by clicking the topic button and then you can open this out and then you can add things to your to do list. You can do things to doing or in review and then you can see whether there's a view date whether you feel that it's complete, whether you need to remove it and whether you think it's done and you can keep track of lots of things and you can have another to do list and you can remove add descriptions and things will appear at the top so you can see whether stuff has been still needs to be done is being completed or it's actually failed and you can go back to the task in itself and edit any of the intrinsic values. And if you also go back to the home, you can see the split of exactly what needs to be done created or updated. And one of my favorite FPS counters, which comes with an awful lot more information than Unity's default FPS counter, which you can pull down and it's called the Graphic Ultimate FPS Debugger. So if you want to install this, you can go to the prefabs folder, then you can go and it does have a graphy for VR or just graphy itself. If you just grab the graphy prefab and you drag that into your scene, you've got a whole heap of customization to whether you want to choose FPS, show RAM, 
audio, you can show advanced data, and you can even script this to show additional debugging that other things don't specify. Then you can see when I'm playing the game, you can see the resolution, you can see all the stats that I've enabled, and you can see the FPS at any given time, and then how much memory is allocated, and you can enable and disable whether you want to show basic information and whether you want any advanced data, and you can enable and disable things as they move along. I've got a really nice asset for backing up your own project or your own game. If you go to file and you can say extract a project to zip. So when you click that button, then you can choose where to back this up, hit save, and this will compress the whole project down into a zipped folder, which will compress everything. So you could create nice and neat, easy backups with one click of a button. So you can see in my folder here, I've got the brand new zip folder and I've got the project exactly here exactly as it was in my original scene. Then we've got an asset called Fast Script Reload, which can take compilation times down to a split second. Instead of Unity redoing the entire code again, this can boil it down and only reload the things that have actually changed. And I've got a full video, which I'll put down in the description, but it's something that you can install and really speed up your Unity workflow. And now we're going to look at installing one called Player Prefs Editor, which is really useful if you use player preferences often. And when that's installed, you can go Tools, BG Tools, and Player Prefs Editor. And it is a dockable window, which I usually like to put down here. So if you do make any saves to, say, the settings menu or anything like that, this will show any of the edits to player preferences. And if you need to remove any, you can just click the little minus. And you can also create your own Player Prefs selections by creating a new property and giving it a name. And I've got one here. If you've got a load of game objects that you need to rename in batches or all at once, I've got something called the Mulligan Renamer and you think, oh God, not renaming again. But we can go to Window, Red, Blue and the Mulligan Renamer. And if you actually select all of the objects that you want to rename, add the selected objects, then you can see what the original and the after is. And if I search for string, game object like this so I know that they're all set like that and I'm going to replace this with I'm just going to name that as wall and I can have this as wall one two three four you can even add new operations like you can add a prefix or a suffix so the prefix is this could be this could be a material or this could be an object which you can then add and rename them and then if I wanted to get rid of those numbers at the back I go add operation then I choose trim characters and then I could choose to delete from the back, so I could choose fall. Now they're all called object underscore wall. Now add a new operation, add a brand new count, and this could make increment of one, count from zero. So maybe I want to count from one, and then you can change the actual format. So I say I like the underscore or something like different numbers, and I could even set a custom amount if I want. So my custom format is going to be underscore and then zero, and then it will increment everything out of that object into exactly what I might want. And then I can just click to rename and you can see now all my objects have been renamed. And then one last one that I'm gonna show you is the surface align tool. If you've ever had problems trying to snap something to the ground, it will add a new icon called the surface alignment tool. Then you can set what axis it should snap to, what the degrees it should snap to, and then we'll be able to choose other assets and easily uniformly put this on other places if we had rocks climbing up walls, things like that. And I do have a full video on showing this snapping working and I'll leave the link down in the description. Just like with all the rest of these assets, I'll leave them below and do comment down below if you find any that are really interesting to you because it'd be great to know what you use. So do be sure to check out all the links down in the description for all the best sales and savings because Unity Spring Sale is now on. My Adventure Puzzle Kit is now 50% off. Do come and support me on Patreon because it helps the channel and you can also get over 225 different scripts, assets and projects you cannot find anywhere else. And also a big thank you to Peter Steiner and everybody else who comes to watch the video. So don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.